Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Knowledge. Welcome to Brews and Reviews, and today I'm reviewing Aesop Rock's new album, Spirit World Field Guide, and I am sipping on a vanilla porter from Breckenridge Brewery in Breckenridge, Colorado. That's a 5.4% porter, and this is the perfect beer for an Aesop Rock album because it's dark. It's complex, but it has hints of flavor. So let's get into this album. Underground fave Aesop Rock, some might say underground god, returns with his eighth studio solo album. He's done many other collaborations, but this is his eighth solo album, and it dropped fittingly on Friday the 14th because it's completely spiritual themed and crossing over into a different otherworldly realm. This was highly anticipated as he's coming off his last solo studio album, The Stellar and Personal, The Impossible Kid, and his criminally overlooked collaboration with electronic producer Tobacco, known as Malibu Ken. That one dropped in 2019. His previous solo album dropped in 2017, so it's been a little while since we got to hear him completely solo on the rhymes and the beat. And he also had a good three-track little soundtrack to a video game called Freedom Finger that also dropped this year, and that poised us to get ready for this kind of experience. As is the case with most of his solo discography, Spirit World Field Guide was produced entirely by Ace himself, and it has his signature production with the heavy bass lines, the bleeps, blips, odd sounds coming into it, off-kilter drums, all meshing together to fit his rapid fire and multi-syllabic flow perfectly. Lyrically, this man is certified through actual research of having the best vocabulary in rap and a bigger vocabulary than Shakespeare as well, I might add. And this album doesn't disappoint. To that end, you'll be looking up a lot of these words. Hello from the spirit world. This is a perfect intro to this album because Ace is talking directly to the listener, telling them what to expect telling them they're about to enter another world and they're possibly about to have a supernatural experience. He grants us permission to skip to any track, but also cautions that we might have to listen to all of them to get a perfect understanding. He says, there will be times when you will be tested in ways this guide can neither prepare you for nor help you from. With that line, he seems to be telling us that the music is open to our own interpretation, which is the sign of any good art, because he's known for his very cryptic, high-concept lyrics, and it might be only within ourselves that we can form our own meaning. And there will be plenty of lyrics to digest and decipher throughout this spiritual journey. The album officially kicks off with The Gates, and this was also the first first official single and the track still holds up a month after it was released and I think listening to this as a whole it was still a great single. I reviewed this in detail and here's what I said back then. There's tons of symbolism and imagery packed into this almost four minute song. Really given the amount of lyrics that he spits it could be much longer and there's a theme presenting itself of nature but not not only nature, but a theme of being dead and crossing over into some other realm. Even death has nothing for him, which he explains on lines like this, where he says, It's sci-fi, red tide, my high and by make record time. I got three to one desensitize. No lie, tell death he could get in line. He could get in line behind all the dark shit that this man could think of himself. My dream home has like 10,000 deadbolts and less than no windows. As the home is often a metaphor for the mind, 
He wants to be locked inside his own head. And you start to realize, or at least wonder at this point, if maybe this is the field guide for survival in that withdrawing from society is maybe how he survives the modern problem button masher. And it's apparent through this track that this spirit world is Aesop's world. He's going to describe it for us and try to make us understand as much as we can, but it is unique uniquely his as the lyrics of this song cruising in a spaceship like a drunk astronaut or like a buzzed Aldrin like he says and this is all symbolic of him being completely absorbed in his own imagination in fact as outsiders try to get in or try to see what's going on in this inner journey that he's having he tells them there's nobody home ace the introvert is completely entertained by his own company. And an awesome beat switch occurs right before the third verse, going from a hard, funky beat to a more piano-led beat. And the switch itself is symbolic of a change within him and kind of entering a different world, possibly with the help of a substance, because right before this beat switch, we hear him say, I have never seen so many colors. Dog at the door. Ace always comes up with these concepts that you would never expect to hear in rap music, yet they're still kind of relatable. This one is about a dog barking in the middle of the night and someone going out to check on it. And the lyrics feature that paranoid inner monologue that go around in everybody's head when you're in this specific scenario. Ace is arguing with himself, trying to come up with benign explanations for why the dog was barking, but ultimately the paranoia comes back and he keeps thinking it's a trap and it gets humorous after he goes out to check on the sound and he's nervous, but nothing happens, but he still ends it with the lines, Fine, it might have been a baby squirrel who tumbled from the nest, but it's probably just that you motherfuckers missed. Concluding finally that it was an actual trap, just an unsuccessful one. Gaz features one of Ace's best flows on the album. He's spitting fast and making these sesquipedalian words sound effortless. While it always sounds good when an MC can make syllables flow together like this, in Ace's case, it makes it extra difficult for a listener, especially when you combine the large vocabulary and the cryptic and symbolic lyrics. It makes it hard for us to understand when he's going this fast. At the same time, it adds depth though, because it makes you want to listen fully. This is not a casual listen to put in on the background. You got to have your headphones on, really trying to catch what he's saying, and it is going to require multiple listens. Aesop Rock is not throwaway music. It's not music that you're going to listen to and just nod your head to. Beat switch here and the flow that follows is incredible. The third verse reveals the duality of his personality, that he can be a good friend, but also a pain in the ass, and he says it better than I did with these lyrics. I give free hugs in a plague mask. Pizza Alley, this was the second single released from the album, and this one is still one of the best musically. And this is about a real, almost spiritual experience that Ace had on an actual trip that he took to Peru. Pizza Alley being a popular nightlife spot there. And it's funny how this concept album on first listen, I felt like it was much less personal than The Impossible Kid because he was telling a story. But in the end, it's actually even more personal because he's talking talking about these very real experiences and spiritual type of experiences that he's had, as well as revealing many of his own thoughts and fears through the vehicle of this spiritual journey. The imagery is great on this song. He actually puts us in this land of Peru, in this foreign place that most of us have not experienced. He shows us the vivid, possibly ayahuasca-fueled experience that he had there. He says, 
you hit the labyrinth, an ambassador of peace and love, you might return with the root of your super ego plunged. Super ego is the rules of how to act that are taught to us by our families and the culture that we're in. Ace is saying that if you have this kind of spiritual experience or you go out and you get to experience other cultures, for him it was in Peru, then you will question everything that you've been indoctrinated to believe. Crystal Sword, this bass line is dope as hell. This is just extended bars, no chorus, although even the songs that have a chorus on this album are not really chorus focused. And on this song, he displays some of his dark humor. He says, inspire a thousand our fathers, people start calling their priests. We've never seen a man so vehemently drawn to the beast. I heard he plays a pipe organ and changes form when he feeds. I've never played a pipe organ, the rest my lawyer concedes. Boot soup? This one has some live sounding drums that seem like they'd be really awkward to flow over, but Ace handles his own drums really well. And I really dig the drum breakdown before the second verse. And nearly every single song has a beat switch between verses. This is when three years between self-produced albums is worth it. You can tell the man put in his work with these beats. Coveralls, this is the third single and it had a video that dropped on the same day that the album dropped. And this is one of the most cryptic songs on an album of cryptic songs. He seems to be saying that he has multiple personalities and can adapt to go unnoticed in any situation. And at the same time that he is not social, he can sit back in a social situation and see all the social awkwardness of others going on around him. Jumping Coffin, and this is a great nod your head beat. A casual listener might just be nodding their head, not really understand what he's talking about, but here he's talking about somebody who's very close to death who is communicating with the spiritual world and he's saying don't be afraid of this spiritual world when they're trying to communicate let them in let's hear them out let's hear what they have to say and whereas others might fear it and they're holding up their crosses and they're trying to ban this demonic spirit whatever's coming at them ace is saying it's best not to piss off the dead that you better let them say what they have to say or finish the business that they needed to finish holy waterfall the spiritual imagery of the previous track is going now into another real experience that ace had another one of his vacations this time it was a trip to cambodia and again, the vivid imagery gives us a very clear picture of his experience among all of his other cryptic lyrics. While he speaks very colorfully, he does also straightforwardly tell us that he learned how to hunt primally, he rode a motorcycle, he smokes shit that he doesn't know how to pronounce, and he goes under a waterfall where minnows eat the skin off your feet. And all of this is adding up to a spiritual experience for him. And that's why I say this is a personal album because all of those things might not sound spiritual to everyone, but you can see why he experienced it as a spiritual journey. It also makes me wonder why my vacations aren't as enlightening as his. Flies, there's a nice change up here. He slows down the flow and gives us a shorter song on this lyrically dense album. And this one is probably the most straightforward lyrics on the album, even though it's another topic that wouldn't be broached by other rappers. He's basically talking about flies being all over his crib. So much so that by the end of the song, he is just giving it to them. Salt? This song is about having very few personal relationships and even those that he does have, he ends up protecting himself or shielding himself from them. He says, I keep a small circle like a deer in a scope. Now this calls back to the album cover, which is just some great artwork, but also talking about his small circle of friends. And when those people try to identify with him, he really thinks they're just trying to get attention for themselves, which he demonstrates with this line, as he eloquently puts it, while I do believe that you believe you're adding to the magic of the motif, 
homie, all I hear is dad, I want a pony. And he ends this song about being isolated even from people that he might care about by saying, I make my hospital corners in a circle of salt. In other words, he's made his bed of isolation and he's going to lie in it. And he's secluding himself with this ring of salt, keeping people from getting in. Sleeper car, this starts off with some cool organ, but then it gets a little too off kilter on the beat for me. And this is really the only miss beat wise on the album, in my opinion. The lyrics are still on par though. I love his first lines on this. He says, bamboo shoots, Buddhas and remove shoes pugilism brewing over who's tuck tucks who's. This shows you how he can paint a picture of his experience with one line, but it's also funny because tuck tuck is food and pugilism is fighting, so you can see them fighting over this food. He just puts it in a really creative way. This is about another one of his trips, this one to Thailand. Later on in the lyrics, we see that he found peace among all his anxieties and all his neuroses by taking care of an elephant. And these experiences that he's having on vacation, is Aesop Rock the most interesting introvert in the world? One to 10 is another short track that's mixed in to add variety to the album. And this one's upbeat, almost jazzy type of beat. The title of the song refers to the pain scale for his old man back. And he says at the end of the song, I'm usually okay to simply shut up and cope, but these days more than ever, my back is like, no, always interesting subject matter for Ace. Add a Boy is an interesting beat with record scratches and melody sections played in reverse. And those morph into a funky bass line and then back again to the original beat. And this again is no chorus, just straight bars. And it really works with this type of beat. Kodakushi, and I hope I'm saying this right, this is a Japanese Japanese term for a real experience that they had in Japan where people were dying alone and not being found for a long time. So an extremely morbid title that fits into this album. And Ace is speaking of his symbolic death throughout the song. He wonders actually if he's gone too far in his isolation because he mentions that he already knows that his own death will be alone. And he reveals that with these lines. He says, I'm a seer. I could tell her how the curtain descend and maybe when and how it isn't with a circle of friends. Fixed and dilated. I love this dark bass line and the shaky piano over it all adds to the dark feel. But then more live sounding drums come in by the second verse and make this dark beat a head nodder. There's some nice record scratches at the end and this beat just carries a lot of variety and makes it really one of my favorite beats on the entire album. Side Quest. This is another short song and this one is about skateboarding which you gather in the concept of this entire album that skateboarding is like a spiritual experience for Ace. His flow here is very different than we've heard him or anybody else do for that matter. It's conversational, almost stream of consciousness, lots of pauses in between. He's getting really experimental with it and I think it works. This is a good song for us true fans to listen to, but I don't know if this is something that I would show to somebody else when you're trying to impress them or get them pulled into Aesop Rock's flow. Marble Cake. This is Ace pondering, almost meditating, or wishing that he can enjoy the regular moments of life and just being in the moment and taking it all in. But then even in this song, he self-sabotages the moments of escape where he's taken in his surroundings that he talks about are like feeding squirrels or telling time by the sun. But he sabotages himself with lines like, I want a thousand lanterns drifting on a summer wind. I'm only joking, y'all can feed me to the fucking pigs. He ultimately concludes in this song that isolation maybe isn't the solution to everything that bothers him. And he comes to the realization, he says, the moat's supposed to keep the rivals out. 
The calls are coming from inside the house. So it's his own mind that torments him. And while he can shut others out, he can never truly escape from himself. And maybe that's what he was trying to do in this spirit world. First, isolate himself to get away from everybody else. At the same time, he's trying to get away from himself and isolate himself from these thoughts that torment him. The music gets very dramatic throughout this song. There's hi-hats building up to a crescendo. There's some howling vocal samples in the end, and it all adds to the climactic feel. Combined with the deep revelation that he can't really escape himself, I think that makes this track the climax of the album. The Four Winds, this is a nice retro feel to the beat, almost like a Bazooka Tooth era style of beat. And you can tell that he's inspired by the beat because I think his second verse on this is his best flow on the entire album. It's filled with alliteration and just flows together really well. And in the third verse, the album ends very abruptly with Aesop saying that he'll see himself out, making us think that he went back to the regular realm and he's gonna go try out the real world again and the spiritual journey is over for him and it's over for us because the album just ended. Wow, this is an Aesop album through and through. We have the verbosity, the complexity, the deep vocabulary, the metaphors, the symbols, the self-deprecation, the dark humor, everything lyrically that makes Aesop Rock Aesop Rock. Beat-wise, it's also trademark Aesop Rock with dark but rhythmic and catchy bass lines, odd sounds that somehow become pleasing when they're meshed together into one beat, and drum patterns that most rappers wouldn't dare to flow over. And when this was advertised, I thought it was going to be extremely conceptual and kind of a full story where Aesop was talking about various characters, and it is, but at the same time, I didn't realize how personal this story was actually going to be. Ace reveals so much of himself through the concept of this spiritual journey. If I do have to come up with one critique for this album, and it's hard, but I would say that there needs to be a little more song variety, although he does switch it up with song lengths and flows. He does maintain a lot of the same tempo in his flows throughout the album, and it's all him. Of course, there's no guest appearances. There's nothing else to break that up. Nothing necessarily wrong with that because he's a great lyricist. But I think that he could have given us maybe one really slow song to break up his rapid fire tempos that we usually hear throughout this album. But otherwise, this is an album that will last. This is not disposable art. This will take many listens to unpack even half of what he's saying. And I know with this review, I've barely even scratched the surface of the meaning behind these songs. And that's a dedication to art that should be encouraged because we don't get enough of it these days. This is a nine out of a 12 pack, great 2020 release, and you'll still probably be deciphering it in 2025. Thank you for watching my review of Aesop Rock Spirit World Field Guide. If you liked this, go ahead and hit like now and hit me up in the comments. You can also subscribe to my channel. The link is popping up on my left and on my right are some other recent videos that I've done. I drop hip hop and hops related content consistently. So until I see you next time, keep buzzing.